Hello, my name is Savas Georgiadis and uh, presently I'm located in Cyprus, in Nicosia, Cyprus. And I am making this video because I want to share with you something that happened to me that uh, I believe is a miracle that uh, speaks to the existence of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So what happened in my house, and I will move the camera so that you can see the location where this happened as I'm narrating. So here is my apartment here. And here is where I have the icons of Jesus and Mother Mary. And in this location here, in this specific spot here, here, I had um, I had this here, which is which is a small Buddha. I don't know if you can see the head of the small Buddha, but anyway, this Buddha here, the small Buddha here, I placed it here. So it was right in front, it was right in front of the Jesus painting, the icon, the Jesus icon. And uh, I, I bought these small Buddhas from a guy from, he was from Pakistan and he was, these are handmade, he made them. And the reason I bought them is I wanted something ethnic. I wanted some uh, cultural aspects in my apartment. Um, so I thought buying that, you know, will give that flavor. Um, because of course I'm all about diversity and appreciating diversity and all of that. Part of that is because I'm also a social work professor. And so I, I take seriously you know, respect for diversity and appreciation and embr embracing diversity. But I never thought in a million years that placing the small Buddha in front of the Jesus icon would be disrespectful to Jesus. Um, I didn't even think about that. Uh, and I, I, I never had in mind that, you know, uh, the Buddha was more important so hence I should have placed him in front of Jesus. I just put it there uh, mechanically. Uh, um, it was a way to, uh, the way I was making up my, the room here and I thought it would look nice there. So for aesthetic reasons. And uh, I did that, I, it was sometime in the fall of 2017. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when, what month. Uh, it, was, it, wasn't long, it wasn't long before December because in December I went to um, I went overseas for uh, for Christmas, and I remember noticing this situation occurring before I left, where the small Buddha Buddha head was turning, started turning, started uh, turning. Uh, so after a few days, I will see the head turning more to an angle. So it was turning by itself. Uh, and I couldn't believe it. And I told actually several people that came to, to my house, to my apartment, um, and they thought I was crazy. Um, and of course, you know, that's normal for people to think that. Um, anyway, um, I came back gen sometime in January, and I continued to see this phenomenon. I will actually turn the head back in its place to be um, right in front of Jesus. Uh, so it had its back on Jesus, and it was facing my, the the door of my apartment, the main entrance of the apartment. And it kept turning. After a few days, I will notice that it turned to an angle, to an angle. And and I will place it back to see if it will turn again, and it will turn again. So I did this. I don't know how many times I can recall. Um, maybe around ten times, something like that. And then I, I spoke to my cousin, who, who is located in Melbourne, Australia, uh, through Skype. And I said, I sh actually showed him 
uh, and I showed him how the the head was t uh, that it turned, you know, from you know from a few days before. Uh, his name is actually Peter Vasiliu, and he um, he lives in Melbourne. And Peter suggested he said, uh, "Don't turn it. Uh, just let the let it." Uh, do its own thing. Don't don't touch it and see wh where it will go. So I did that, and around uh, the beginning of March, my good friend from Greece, his name is Kostas Botopoulos, uh, came to visit with me just for one. Uh, I, I hosted them here only for just one night uh, with his girlfriend. Vasiligi, uh, I don't know her last name, but um, a really wonderful girl, wonderful woman um, that I met for the first time. And I told them about this. I told them about the, and I showed them. I showed because I, by that time I wasn't touching the head. And the head turned, um, it turned almost all the way to, to look at Jesus. Not exactly, but clo it was close to. So it turned over. Uh, it was about, I would say, um, I would say perhaps 120 degrees angle towards. So, so if it reached 60 more degrees, it will it will face Jesus. It was more than 120 degrees. It was, I would think. Let me think. Um, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> my my math is escaping me right now. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know exactly how many degrees. Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly, but so I'm not going to give you a, a figure because I'm probably going to give the wrong figure. But anyway, so I have this discussion with uh, my friend and his girlfriend, and I'm trying to explain what's going on. You know, trying to, and to my surprise, they didn't think I was crazy. They believed me, um, and. And then his girlfriend came up with this explanation as we're trying to figure out what's going on. Um, my initial thought, my initial thought was that the Buddha was turning its head on its own, um, trying to look at Jesus, because the Buddha wanted to show respect to Jesus. So that's what that was a prevalent um, theory that I had in mind at that point. When Vasiliki, Basi, um, yeah, Basi when she proposed as a as a as a B theory, she said, "Well, what if Jesus is making the Buddha head turn? Because Jesus is showing Buddha who God is, and that made a lot of sense to me." And that's what I really believe happens here, because I don't think that the Buddha itself has special powers to turn its head around. And I say that because uh, I was I had an inner feeling that what the the theory the what she was proposing as an explanation was was the real thing. I just I felt that when she said that it hit me, and it made a lot of sense and. Uh, you know, I'm th I think that's really w what explains this. Uh, another reason for my thinking is that when I moved Buddha, because right after that I immediately um, removed removed it from its from that location from that place, because I thought I was disrespecting God by doing that, and I placed it in a different place. I actually placed it um, very close to that table. That table is there, so I placed it on this table here. And and I placed it uh, in this position like that, like that. So I removed it from uh, the place where it was in front of Jesus and placed it at this table here, uh, facing uh, the, the the couch, this couch. So when I placed it in this location, it never moved. It never moved its head. And that makes sense because now in this location he is not in front of Buddhas, in front of Jesus, so he is not being disrespectful to Jesus, to God. So uh, I wanted to share this story because it happened to me, it happened in my own home, and this is not the only thing that happened to me. 
at all. Um, I had the presence of God in my life. Uh, God has shown up to me. Um, and and I will follow up with more information about that when I'm ready to say you know the things that I have see, that I have experienced with God. But I want you to believe my story because my story is true, is truthful, and I will never ever make up something like that. Um, and just I want you to believe in Jesus because Jesus, God, you know, God is real, and without God we're nothing. And without Jesus, there is no salvation. And I can't tell you how much, you know, Jesus has influenced my life. Uh, in fact, I, I don't think I would be alive today if, if it wasn't for, for my belief, in my strong belief in Jesus. And I'm so thankful that I grew up going to church school. I had a wonderful priest was very Jesus-like. Um, he had that charisma, you know. You felt like you were in the presence of God when he talked to you. And he's actually a priest that is very famous in Cyprus because later on he became a bishop. He became the bishop of Kyrenia and his name was Father Pavlos or a later on Bishop Pavlos of uh, Kyrenia. Kyrenia is a it's a town, it's a, it's a city in the north of Cyprus, which is now occupied by the Turks. Um, but yes, please believe in Jesus. If you don't believe, start believing. Um, he's real. He's real and, and you want him because he will make your life more beautiful. He will make you a stronger person. He will guarantee your salvation, but you have to believe. You have to believe. I don't want to. I don't want to say too much at this point. Um, but please accept my story as a real story because it really happened to me. Um, and I have my witnesses are Costas and his girlfriend. My witnesses are um, Peter, my cousin other people who visited my apartment and they were seeing, you know, they, I was showing them how, uh, how it, how it uh, shifted its position, the small Buddha. Um, thank you so much for listening, I really appreciate that. I, I didn't mean for this video to be too long, but take what I'm t telling you at heart and Make this uh, a reason for you to search, for you to find out about Jesus. Uh, look at the look at the movies. Read the Bible, read the Bible, and you will find a lot of answers to your questions. And uh, he is the truth. Jesus is the truth. There is nothing more important. There is nothing more beautiful. There is nothing that is a better guide for you how to live your life. You have to repent. You have to pray. You have to maintain a daily strong relationship with Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Because that's the only way to salvation. And believe me, whatever problems you have, however big they may seem, they will look small when you embrace Jesus. Because Jesus is so far beyond those problems. You see, the, the, the source, the birth of our problems is Satan. Satan is trying to destroy us. So Satan, the devil, is creating all these problems. I'll, I'll give you a few examples. The love for money. <coughs> the hatred. The jealousy. The love for, mar for material. I have been a victim of that too. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not a sinner. I am a sinner. And we're, we're all sinners, you know, human beings, we're all sinners. <coughs> the whole point is that we acknowledge that, that we're sinners. And we embrace Jesus as our Savior. And we, uh, we become better people. And we build our relationship with Jesus on a daily basis. On, you know, pray every day, repent every day. 
um, find out more about Jesus every day. So become that beautiful flower in your garden. You know, in order for your beautiful flower in your garden to happen, you need to water it. And the only way to water it, if we're talking about yourself, is through uh, believing and through studying and through um, reaching out and finding out information. And forget about what they told what they told you, what you should believe, what you should not believe. You know, do a restart. Do a restart. Uh, the, your best your best clue is going to come when you build a relationship with God. Because when you build a relationship with Jesus, you're going to start getting answers to your questions about everything, about every single thing, about your past, about your present, and about your future. It's going to uh, remove your insecurities that you have, your fears, everything, everything. So start believing, start searching, and believe me, remember my words. You will become more enriched as a person, stronger, um, and your life will acquire meaning. When you know, if you thought before that life does not have a lot of meaning, is worthless, whatever. Now every every single second of your life is going to have meaning, because Jesus is meaning. Jesus is the meaning of life. Thank you for listening, and I hope to uh, revisit with you with more videos about you know about faith and spirituality and our love for Jesus Christ, our Savior. Thank you and take care and be safe.